Stephen, everyone wants to know what was around before the Big Bang. Nothing was around before the Big Big Bang. According to Einstein's general theory of relativity, space and time together form a space-time continuum or manifold which is not flat, but curved by the matter and energy in it. I adopt the Euclidean approach to quantum gravity to describe the beginning of the universe. In this, ordinary real time is replaced by imaginary time, which behaves like a fourth direction of space. In the Euclidean approach, the history of the universe in imaginary time is a four-dimensional curved surface, like the surface of the Earth, but with two more dimensions. Jim Hartle and I proposed a no-boundary condition. The boundary condition of the universe is that it has no boundary. Okay. In order terms, the Euclidean space-time is a closed surface without add like the surface of the Earth. One can regard imaginary in real time as beginning at the South Pole, which is a smooth point of space-time where the normal laws of physics hold. There is nothing south of the South Pole, so there was nothing around before the Big Bang. Did you know that the universe might not have started with the Big Bang, the way we've all been taught? For decades, this explosive origin story has been our cosmic foundation, the accepted truth passed down in classrooms and textbooks alike. But now, a wave of new discoveries is stirring doubt and wonder, challenging everything we thought we knew about how our universe came to be. One of the biggest headaches for scientists today is what they call the lithium problem. Alongside the strange imbalance between matter and antimatter, it's shaking the very ground beneath our understanding of the cosmos, hinting that maybe, just maybe, we're on the verge of a revolutionary shift in how we see everything. For years, we believed the universe burst forth from a single, unimaginably dense point, the Big Bang, sending space and time rushing outward. That was the story everyone trusted. But the latest revelations from the Webb telescope combined with growing whispers of dissent in the scientific community, are beginning to unravel this tale. At the heart of this cosmic mystery is lithium, a tiny element now demanding big answers. According to the classic Big Bang Theory, a very specific amount of light lithium should have formed in the universe's first few minutes. But when astronomers dive into the Webb's treasure trove of data, scanning ancient stars for lithium's telltale signature, they find only a sliver of what the theory predicts. This discrepancy was a puzzle even before Webb's launch, but now the gap is glaringly obvious, sparking frustration and fascination alike. Before Webb, telescopes like Hubble and others based on Earth had already identified some of the oldest stars out there, cosmic relics that should have been glowing with lithium's presence. Yet time and again, the numbers didn't add up, it was as if lithium was hiding or simply missing, refusing to fit into the neat narrative scientists had long accepted. Webb's discoveries stretch even further back in time, peering deeper into the cosmic past, and the lithium shortage persists. So how do we reconcile this mismatch? Is there still room for the Big Bang in this new story? Some scientists are exploring an intriguing alternative, the Galactic Origin of Light Elements model, or GOAL. Instead of lithium forming in the initial cosmic fireball, this model suggests it was slowly forged within the first generations of stars, over millions of years. This means those early stars didn't just light up the universe, they also sowed the seeds for life's building blocks, patiently enriching space over eons. But lithium isn't the only cosmic enigma we're wrestling with. Another deep mystery is the strange surface brightness of distant galaxies and, more broadly, the baffling imbalance of matter and antimatter scattered across the cosmos. You might wonder, why does any of this matter? Well, this matter-antimatter puzzle cuts to the heart of why we exist at all. <laughs> Picture this. Matter and antimatter are like mirror image twins. When they meet, they annihilate into pure energy. 
Yet, somehow, matter won out in our universe, giving birth to stars, planets, and life itself. Understanding why this happened is one of the most thrilling and profound questions in modern physics. To wrap our heads around it, we need to look closely at what matter really is. It's made up of tiny building blocks, atoms, electrons, protons, and neutrons, the very stuff that composes everything we know. And on the flip side, antimatter, identical yet opposite, ready to erase matter on contact. How this cosmic dance resolved in favor of matter remains one of the universe's greatest riddles. Everything around us, every star blazing in the night sky, every planet spinning silently through space, every living being breathing on Earth is made of matter. But here's a fascinating twist. In theory, every particle that makes up matter has a shadowy twin, an antiparticle. For example, the tiny electron has a positively charged counterpart called the positron, and the proton has a negatively charged partner known as the antiproton. These antiparticles mirror their matter siblings perfectly in mass, but their electric charges are flipped like a cosmic yin and yang. Now, when a particle meets its antiparticle, something dramatic happens. They annihilate each other in a flash, vanishing instantly and releasing bursts of energy usually in the form of high-energy radiation. It's a cosmic vanishing act with powerful consequences. According to the well-established laws of physics, the so-called standard model, matter and antimatter should have been born in equal parts during the Big Bang. Logically, neither should have had the upper hand. But look around, the universe tells a different story. What we see is almost entirely matter. Antimatter, it's scarce, found mostly in controlled lab experiments or fleetingly among cosmic rays zipping through space. No galaxy, no star, and no living creature you know is made of antimatter. Here lies the profound paradox. If matter and antimatter really formed in perfect balance, they would have wiped each other out completely. The universe as we know it, with all its stars, planets, and life, would never have come to be. Instead, there would be nothing but a sea of radiation, no light to illuminate the darkness, no atoms to build worlds, and no life to ponder the cosmos. So, something extraordinary must have happened. A tiny imbalance, a subtle tip of the scales, created just a whisper more matter than antimatter. Even a surplus as minuscule as one extra particle for every billion could have been enough to shape the entire cosmos, including you and me. But why did this slight favoring happen? Was it a cosmic accident? A hidden law of nature? or perhaps something grander, a design beyond our understanding. Physicists call this tiny quirk a CP violation, a breaking of charge parity symmetry, meaning some particles and their antiparticles don't behave in perfectly mirrored ways. Scientists have observed hints of this in experiments, like the peculiar decay of certain particles called mesons. Yet the known effects aren't enough to explain why matter dominates so completely. That means the universe might still be hiding secrets, unknown particles or mysterious processes that gave matter its edge, ensuring the universe didn't vanish into nothingness. All these groundbreaking discoveries and the puzzles they bring point toward unknown, unexplored corners of physics that we have yet to understand. Scientists have come up with intriguing ideas like baryogenesis and leptogenesis, complex theories that try to trace the mysterious imbalance between matter and antimatter back to events just moments after the Big Bang. Then there are even wilder hypotheses, like the idea that somewhere out there in a parallel universe, antimatter reigns supreme, balancing out our matter-dominated cosmos in a vast multiverse. Imagine the universe as part of a cosmic ledger, with matter on one side and antimatter on the other, each universe keeping its own score. Yet all these ideas remain just that, speculation without concrete evidence. The matter-antimatter asymmetry isn't just another open question for particle physicists, it's a fundamental hole in the very story of where everything began. If the Big Bang truly created matter and antimatter equally, why do we see almost exclusively matter today? Baryogenesis zooms in on baryons, particles like protons and neutrons, the very building blocks of atoms. Thanks to a phenomenon linked to CP violation, matter and antimatter didn't behave identically in certain situations. 
This tiny difference might have been enough for a small amount of matter to survive the Annihilation Dance, giving birth to the universe we know. Leptogenesis is a closely related idea, focusing on leptons, particles like electrons and the elusive neutrinos. According to some cutting-edge theories, especially the seesaw mechanisms, there could have been incredibly heavy, right-handed neutrinos in the early universe. These hypothetical particles might have decayed in a way that created an imbalance among leptons. Thankfully, the next wave of experiments at CERN and the Large Hadron Collider in Geneva promises to push neutrino research to new heights over the coming decade, bringing us closer to uncovering the truth. Perhaps soon we'll finally understand how the Big Bang's perfect balance tipped just enough to create everything, galaxies, stars, planets, and life itself. But what if our universe isn't alone? What if somewhere out there, in a hidden corner of reality, antimatter dominates instead of matter? It sounds like science fiction, but this is the frontier of modern theoretical physics. If the Big Bang really did produce equal parts matter and antimatter, then the question haunts us. Where did all the antimatter go? Did it vanish? Or could it have slipped away to somewhere else, another universe, where it rules supreme? One captivating idea is the concept of a mirror universe, a hidden cosmic reflection where antimatter thrives. Could it be that our universe is only half the story? Imagine an anti-universe, a cosmos mirroring ours, with galaxies, stars, and planets just like ours, but made entirely of antimatter. In this bold vision, the aftermath of the Big Bang didn't create a single universe, but split reality into two realms, matter thriving here in our universe and antimatter flourishing in another. The cosmic ledger stays perfectly balanced, but the matter and antimatter are separated into distinct domains. And if this is true, it means there's an invisible anti-imprint of our own world out there somewhere. This idea offers a beautifully symmetrical solution to the age-old matter-antimatter mystery. It might even help explain some of the baffling quirks of our cosmos, like why certain fundamental constants align so precisely, or why some gravitational anomalies defy easy explanation. But if this anti-universe really exists, it must somehow be linked to ours, waiting for science to uncover its hidden traces. Some theories take it even further, proposing that the mysterious dark matter, the invisible substance thought to make up about 85% of the universe's mass, might actually be antimatter. Not in the way we usually think of it, but as a kind of shadow realm, an antimatter dimension that interacts with our universe primarily through gravity. This could explain why dark matter stubbornly refuses to show up in detectors, even though its gravitational fingerprint is etched across galaxies and clusters everywhere. Perhaps there are hidden dimensions beyond our current reach, or undiscovered forces and phenomena lurking within the fabric of reality itself. If you're as fascinated by these cosmic mysteries as I am, subscribe now and join us for more mind-expanding explorations of the universe.